Fibonacci numbers is a concept which I'm really fascinated about. And that is because it is not only a programming problem, but a beautiful mathematical concept in itself. I'm pretty sure you must have encountered problems on Fibonacci numbers when you just started your coding journey, correct? And naturally, it is asked in a lot of coding interviews as well. So why all the hype? Why am I so amused? What is so special about these numbers? Let's try to find a little bit about it in this video. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I'm going to take up a sample problem on lead code and discuss some of its test cases. After that, we're going to see an efficient solution how you can derive a Fibonacci series and then we will also do a dry run of the code so you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. And after all of this, at the very end, I have a little bit of bit for you. So I'm just going to show you what are all the real life application of Fibonacci numbers and all the magic that you can find. You will be really, really surprised. So stick for that part a little bit longer. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's take up a sample problem and understand it. In this problem, you're given a positive integer n and you have to determine the nth Fibonacci number, correct? So that means that you will have n different places and you have to fill these places somehow, correct? Now, how do you go about filling it? You are given some starter conditions. That is f0 equals to 0 and f1 equals to 1. So I will write down these two values. f0 is 0 and f1 is 1. For the next set of values, I have been defined the nth Fibonacci number as n minus 1th number plus n minus 2th number, right? That means the sum of last two numbers. So I will add 0 and 1 over here and then I will get the value 1 again. To find this next number, I will add the last two numbers. So I will get a 2 over here. Moving ahead, I will add last two numbers to get my next value and that will be 3. You keep on doing this, 2 plus 3 and that will be 5. 3 plus 5 and that will be my next number and that is 8. Similarly, you will get 13, then 21 and then 34. Now, if you look at the sample test cases, what is the answer when the value of n equals to 2? The answer is 1. What is the value when n equals to 5? The answer is 5. What is the value when the value of n equals to 8? That is 21. So for these particular test cases, these are your answers. Now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better now, feel free to give it a try. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and start to understand what is actually a Fibonacci series. A Fibonacci series is a very common series, but what's special about it is how it is generated. You are given a starting condition. That is f0 equals to 0 and f1 equals to 1. And after that, you have been given a formula that the nth Fibonacci number is fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So what does this actually mean? Let us say I have to generate when the value of n is equal to 2. So this will translate to f1 plus of f0. You can substitute these two values and then get your result. So the value of f2, this will be equal to 1 again. Now, if someone asks you, okay, what is the next number? So you're going to write down f3 equals to f2 plus f1. Here, you do not have to calculate f2 again. You already know that f2 is 1. So I'm just going to reuse this value. So this is how you start to get a series. f0 is 0, f1 is 1, f2 is 1 again, and then f3 is 2 again. Similarly, if you want to keep moving ahead, you can find out f4. You got 3 as your next number and you can write it down over here. So technically, you are just adding the last two numbers and that is giving you your next number in the series. So this series is gonna be like 5 and then 8 and then so on. You get the idea, right? So this is how a Fibonacci series actually looks like. And all of these numbers, these are called as Fibonacci numbers. So if someone asks you that, hey, find me the nth Fibonacci number. I am pretty sure that you will be very tempted to come up with a solution like this. What you can simply do is, if you want to find the nth Fibonacci number, you can just return Fibonacci number of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci number n minus 2, right? This is a recursive function and it will eventually calculate the correct result, right? But if you approach this problem in this way, then you are calculating all of the solutions again and again. Think about it. If you start with Fibonacci of 8, then you calculate Fibonacci 7 plus Fibonacci 6. Once again, since this is a recursive function, you will calculate two values, Fibonacci 6 plus Fibonacci 5. 
and 6 will also calculate two more functions f of 5 and then f of 4 right this will go on and eventually you will arrive at the correct answer but there is one problem you are doing multiple calculations for example look over here when you are trying to calculate f of 6 you have already find it out over here right so all of this entire tree this will be redundant and similarly with f of 5 you would have already calculated it over here once again a redundant tree so that is why this solution this will give you a time complexity of order of 2 to power n and this is not desired you need to find out an efficient way to find out the ns fibonacci number and if you realize in this approach we are never considering the fact that we have already calculated some of the previous results and we have to reuse it that means memoization will help you out over here and memoization means dynamic programming don't worry dynamic programming is very very easy i'll tell you how once again you have your starting conditions correct and since you have to use memoization you know that you need a place to store all of your results somewhere correct memoization simply means storing all of your results so that you can reuse it later so what i'm going to do is i will take the help of an array and in this array i'm going to reuse all of the results that i have already calculated so how do i start it first of all i have two values f0 equals to 0 and f1 is 1 so in my array i add these two values initially now to calculate the next value i have f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 now instead of calculating both these values i can look up my values in the array right 0 and 1 i just add them up and i get my next value that is 1 similarly moving ahead you have to calculate f of 3 once again you don't have to calculate all of the previous results just add the previous two values and you're going to get the next value that is 2. Moving ahead, add the previous two values and get the next value and that is 3. Similarly, add these two values and get the next value 5. You can continue to then populate this array. So now, if someone asks you that, hey, what is the value when n equals to 9? You get this value 34 directly. You don't have to build the entire tree and you don't have to recurse again and again. So this is one of the solutions that work in a linear time complexity. If the value of n is 9, it will take you 9 iterations to arrive at your answer. Correct? So this is how you can define a Fibonacci series and this is how you can generate Fibonacci numbers. What you just did over here is dynamic programming. You were able to use your previous results to arrive at a new result. Correct? Look at any instance. You used 5 and 8 to arrive at your next answer that is 30. So once you have this memoized array, if someone asks you, okay, what is the value when n equals to 9, you return 34. What is the value when n equals to 5, you return 5. And so on, right? You get the idea. Let us quickly do a dry run of this code and see how it is working in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have a value of n equals to 4 that is passed in as an input parameter to the function fib. Starting off with a dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we return all the base edge cases. So if the value of n is 0 or 1, you simply return it. Moving on in the next step, I initialize a memoization map. So this map will actually store all of my memoized values. And as you remember, to start off, I will put on my base cases. So map 0 is 0 and map 1 is 1. I can then start a for loop where I keep on adding all of my previous values and start to fill up my map. Once this loop completes, you can simply return map of n and this will be your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you are populating your memoized map that has a length of n and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because you are taking up some space to store all of your results. Now, in this problem, if you were asked that, okay, you have to find out only one Fibonacci number, then actually you do not need to store all of these numbers anywhere. You can just store the last two numbers in some temporary variables and allot the new variable with the last two numbers. Then update the previous one of the numbers and then you can keep moving ahead, right? In that condition, the space complexity can change to order of one because you are not storing all of the results. You are still doing memoization, but not storing it. So that saves you some space. The time complexity will still remain order of n, however. So this is how the dry run and Fibonacci numbers in general look like. But as I promised, in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about Fibonacci numbers and how they are so special. So once again, I have a few numbers of the Fibonacci series in front of me. 
and when you plot them, they look something like this. I will tell you how. So look at this first number, that is 1. What we do is, we place a 1 by 1 grid. And this is one block that I have placed of the side 1 by 1. Look at the next number, 1 again. So I will place one more block that has the grid size 1, correct? Look at the next number now, that is 2. So I need a 2 by 2 grid. And where can you find it? This is the 2 by 2 grid. And if you look closely, once I have placed both the one blocks, I am able to align it perfectly, correct? Look at the next number now, 3 by 3. So I took a 3 by 3 block and once again, I was able to align it perfectly over here. Similarly, when you move ahead, you see 5 and my next block is of 5 by 5 blocks. Moving on to the next number 8, I get a 8 by 8 grid. The next number is 13 and I will get a 13 by 13 grid. So you see how I am taking up all of these blocks and aligning them perfectly with each other. Correct? Now, what do you do with them? Let me zoom in and try to show you. So start off with the first block. I take up both the edges and draw an arc over here. Next, I have one by one block again and I draw an arc. Take up the two by two block now and once again draw an arc connecting the edges. Move to the next block and once again draw an arc that is connecting the edges. The next block is five by five. So take up both the edges and draw an arc. Move on to the next block and that is 8 by 8. Draw an arc joining the two edges. And now for the last block, once again draw an arc joining the edges. So what kind of a pattern are you getting over here? You are seeing somewhat of a spherical pattern, right? Something that looks like this. And this pattern, this is found in a lot of places in nature. Let me show you some examples. If you have looked at some of the geographical images that they show of cyclones, they look something like this, right? And once again, you see the same pattern over here, right? And similarly, if you take up a seashell and then try to dissect it, once again, you will see a same pattern over here. What more? If you have even seen galaxies, even galaxies follow the same pattern, right? And this is how you will see Fibonacci numbers everywhere in the nature. And even with trees, you are able to see a Fibonacci sequence. For example, you have a root and then it will divert into two parts. What generally happens is, one of the branches will not diverge and the other branch will once again diverge into two. Going forward, one of the branch does not branch and the other branch goes into two parts, right? So this is how, when you measure the levels, just look at the number of branches. You see one, two, three, five, eight, and 30. What is this? This is once again a Fibonacci sequence. And this is how you see Fibonacci sequences all around you in nature. And I'm pretty sure you have seen this pattern in so many places, right? Just try to remember. So this is one example. The other fun thing about a Fibonacci sequence is the golden ratio. I'm also pretty sure that you have heard this term somewhere or the other, right? Golden ratio. But have you ever wondered how is it derived? Just look at this Fibonacci sequence once again. I have few of these numbers, correct? Just take any two numbers and divide them by each other. Take up 13 and 8. 13 divided by 8 will be 1.625. Take the next two numbers, 21 and 13. Divide them, you get 1.615. Similarly, take up 34 and 21, you get 1.619. And for 55 and 34, you get 1.618. In fact, if you keep on doing it for all of these numbers ahead, every time you divide two consecutive Fibonacci numbers, you are going to get a value that is 1.618. And that number is called the golden ratio. In fact, when you try to plot it out, I agree that these two values will not give you the value 1.618. But as you move ahead in the series, you get your graph something like this. And this value remains consistent somewhere around this particular golden ratio. And that is why this golden ratio is very, very important. You might not even realize but this golden ratio has been used in a lot of places to make things look very appealing. For example, when you take a look at the Google logo, it may seem that these are two circles at first, right? But they both have a different radius. The outer circle is 800 pixels and the inner one is 500 pixels. When you divide them, you get 1.618. That is the golden ratio in fact. Take for instance, the Toyota logo. Once again, if you look at all of these values, 
you divide them and once again you get the golden ratio take for instance the apple logo instead do you see this pattern right this is once again the same pattern that we just discussed so you are using fibonacci sequences each and everywhere in logo itself you never realize but this is the reason why some of the logos feel very appealing and some of the logos do not look as attractive think about it you have seen a lot of apps as well right where you upload a photograph and click on beautify what does it do it once again tries to look at your face and then tries to determine all the angles how it can compute the golden ratio it will try to map all of it and then result you a final image and you would say that hey you are looking attractive now correct of course being attractive is someone's perception but this is a general idea how all of these apps are actually working and they make you attractive in fact if you look at your phone camera settings as well you will have grid options over there right and if you click on grid type they are probably going to see the golden ratio over there as well so this golden ratio is used at a lot of places even without you realizing it so next time when you see the word golden ratio appear try to come back to this video and do comment me what did you find out there are endless examples of how fibonacci numbers are used in the nature and these are only a few examples which i could find to make things interesting for you i hope i was able to give you a brief overview about fibonacci numbers as per my final thoughts i just want to say that the applications that we just discussed these are not limited there can be a lot of different ways how you can use the fibonacci numbers and even generating this series there are a lot of different ways you can use metrics you can use the golden ratio directly and all of these methods they have their own complications and they have their own limitations some of them are preferred there are also solutions which work in a constant time and it basically depends on your requirement fibonacci numbers tend to grow larger and larger very quickly so most of the time they would fit in a int category but there can be some problems where you have to generate very large fibonacci numbers as well so over there the way you approach the problem changes so while going through this video did you face any problems or have you seen any other applications in the nature or just in general where you have seen the golden ratio or fibonacci numbers happening tell me all of it in the comment section below and it would be also helpful for anyone else who is also watching this video i'll try to answer your comments and queries as soon as possible as a reminder if you found this video helpful please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends this motivates me to make more and more such videos where i can simplify concept and bring some new things for you also let me know what other problems do you want me to solve next until then see ya